Hello all, welcome to the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert Course and Certification Part 12. In this video, we will look at pivoting as part of port exploitation. This video is part of the SMFE courseware and if you would like to enroll and certify, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE for more details. Our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 30 plus countries around the globe. And this video is provided free of charge to the community in line with our vision to provide quality free content to one and all. Okay, so now we are at phase six of post exploitation where how an attacker could use the victim to break further into the network. Now, let me give you a sample scenario to explain what I mean. So let's say the attacker wants to break into a network which has a DMZ in which there is server one which he can access. And then behind the second firewall, you have server two, which he's actually interested in, right? Maybe this is the email server or something or the other. Now, the only way the attacker can break in is first to break into server one and then use that as a staging point to break into server two. This process is what is called pivoting and server one is the pivot into the rest of the network. Now, let me actually show you the demonstration of how pivoting works with Metasploit. Before that, here is the scenario we are going to use to break in. Uh, the attacker has an addressable IP 192.168.1.10 with which he can access server 1 which is at 1.100. Server 1 is multi-homed and has another IP 10.10.10.10 which is connected to server 2 at 10.10.10.20. The whole idea of this exercise is to first break into server 1, create a pivot to allow the attacker to then channelize all his attack traffic to server 2 and then finally break in here. So let's look at our network. So this is actually server 1 which is multi-homed and has two interfaces. Right? And then this is server 2 which only has one interface and has the IP 10 10 10 20. So what we are going to do is first break into server 1 which has the addressable IP to the attacker 1.100 and let's break in. There you go. Now what we can do is we can run the ipconfig command to understand more about the local interfaces. So this was the interface through which we have broken right now. However, there seems to be an additional interface with the IP all tens. Now the first thing you want to do is to check if there is even any host running on this subnet. To do that, we'll run a metapreter script called ARP scanner and give it the subnet range. We want to try via the remote machine. And if you notice, almost immediately it tells us that IP address 10 10 20, a uh, 10 10 10 20 on this MAC address is available on that subnet. So the next step would be to do a port scan. However, the problem really is from the attacker computer, we cannot reach that network. So what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and create a pivot. And to do that, we'll use the route command in Metasploit. So what we'll do is we'll tell Metasploit to route all traffic to the 10, 10, 10 network via the metapreter session 1 which we currently have with server 1. 
forgot the add command right now if I do a route print you would actually see that in Metasploit a pivot has been created for the 10 10 10 10 network via session 1 right and this is the session we currently have with server 1 so what I'm going to do is first do a port scan on the remote machine so to use that let me go back here and say use auxiliary scanner port scan let's do a vanilla TCP scan show options need to set the our host in this case it will be 10 10 10 20 which is the final victim and the ports we are interested in is 1 to 200 now let's run the auxiliary module now the best thing is all of this traffic is going through the pivot point right that's the best part So this should take a bit. And there you go. We find that a couple of ports seem to be open on the remote machine, right? So we've done a port scan as well. Now let's actually go back and use the net API exploit which we had on the remote machine via the pivot point, right? So basically what we are doing right now is using server 1 as the intermediary to break into server 2 and the way we did this was to create a route on Metasploit to tell it that the Metapreter session here needs to route all traffic to the 10.10.10 .10 network via this machine I hate the search time in Metasploit okay so here goes let me take this copy paste it let's look at the options now we need to set the our host to 10.10.10.20 which is the final victim now one of the other things which you would also need to remember is that the payload will need to be a bind TCP simply because the reverse connect would never work because 10.10.10.20 would never know how to reach back the attacker's IP which is 192.168.1.10 because it may be disallowed. So we'll use Windows Metapreter bind TCP so that we can connect to the victim rather than the victim connecting to us, right? So we'll see if we need any other options. Everything looks okay. Let's hit exploit. So now we are exploiting 10, 10, 10, 20 via the pivot running on 192.168.1.100 1 which is multi-homed and has an additional IP 10, 10, 10, 10, right? And there you go. Awesome. We have a metapreter session now. And if I run the if IP config command, note that we have broken into the 10 10 10 20 network and this clearly says that this has happened via the pivot running on this machine 192 168 1.100 right so if i actually background this metapreter session and do a sessions hyphen l you would clearly see there are two sessions right now this is the original one with which we broke into 1.100 and the second one is with which we've broken into 10, 10, 10, 20 via the pivot created on 1.100. Fantastic, right? So this is how we've been able to break further into the network using pivoting uh, and via Metasploit. Right? So that's all for this video. This is part of the SMFE courseware. Uh, we have tons of stuff, students forum, lab exercises and whatnot. 
So if you're interested, please enroll at securitytube.net slash SMFE. Thank you very much. And if you're watching this on SecurityTube, please leave your comments behind. Thank you and have a great day ahead.